10 feet wide, weighs about six tons, powered by two engines, both of them 496 cubic inch, right? Uh, this is a fun adventure ride, but there's a lot of history and geology associated with this area, so I will be speaking about that a little bit as we make our way up and down the river. But we're going to take it easy just a little bit longer, then we'll speed things up. can be a lot rougher than those we just experienced so always hang on top. straight ahead towards the top of that cliff uh, off to the left there you'll see uh, the use of some imagination the hawk's profile as a slit above for the eye a upper and lower beak and even a tongue in the center and then if you stretch your imagination a bit farther uh, off to the right you see the shoulder of the left wing as it soars across the wisconsin river now there is some uh, native american legend that goes along with it it is said that if uh, an individual was accused of a crime they were brought here to the edge of the ledge, and they were to stand there for the day. If a hawk flew over, well, then they were considered uh, innocent and released. If a hawk did not fly over, well, there was a boulder tied around their leg, and they were pushed over the edge to their certain death. As this is about 60 feet deep right here, deepest part of the river we'll be passing over today. The average uh, depth of water will pass by is about 12 to 15 feet. Beach and Park, out on County Road A. 
nice place to come down and spend some time by the water. You'll see the River's Edge Resort. They rent out all those different flotation dev devices over there that you see. Also have a nice restaurant I've eaten at many times. Highly recommend it. There's a nice big opening there in front of you. Native Americans used to come here in the evening and light a fire inside that opening with the hopes of luring in the big uh, kahuna or big ugly fish. They were referring to the lake sturgeon that uh, are in these waters. Their ultimate goal was to spear a sturgeon as long as they were tall. And that was a very attainable goal as a sturgeon will reach a length of seven feet in these waters. Well, they are seven feet long, they're probably about a hundred years old. If you look about halfway up the rock, you're going to see some mud nests made by little birds called cliff and bank swallows that migrate here each year from South America. They're very welcome guests to the Del Zaire that they two to three times their way to mosquitoes and other insects each day. Now, the mosquitoes they don't eat weeds, they're mainly live trap in Senda, Minnesota. The state bird in Minnesota, isn't it? The mosquito? see another uh, rocky island it is actually separated by a large crack right down the center 
Oh, this song is called out. Twin Equals. Like, to use your imagination a bit, the pine trees above could be the quills of the pen sticking out and the darker colored rock, the ink spilling over. They also make up a natural compass. The one on the left points north and south. On the right, of course, east and west. Oh, this was named the Twin Inks Wells by Henry Hamilton Bennett, who was a landscape photographer in the 1800s. Took a lot of the uh, first pictures of these beautiful rock formations, and when he saw them, he thought they looked like the ink wells on his desk at home. Now, Henry Hamilton Bennett was a very influential man in this area because he took so many of the uh, first pictures of these beautiful rock formations. Many of those pictures were published in newspapers and magazines around the country, and when people saw them, they were so impressed with the beautiful scenery that they wanted to come here and see it for themselves. So Henry Hamilton uh, Bennett was very uh, instrumental in spiking the tourism industry here in the Dells. Uh, there is a Henry Hamilton Bennett Museum in downtown Wisconsin Dells on Broadway Street, which is the street with all the shops we have. If you ever want to check out some of his photographs. Straight ahead, we have our last uh, rocky island called Lone Rock. What makes this rock unique is the fact that it is hollow on the inside. If you uh, look straight ahead, you can see right through it, there's a Hershey's Kiss-shaped hole there, or an upside-down heart shape. Thus the name Sweetheart's Cave. Uh, I would not call this Sweetheart's Cave personally, because there's uh, a lot of creepy things in there, like Spiders. Insects, spiders, of course. Bats, pigeons, angry raccoons. Take a fast, Yan. 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 Take a fast, Yan.